feel like this lack of caring in the community, this disconnection. There's a lot of there's a lot of anger. You know, there's a lot of single parent homes. There's a lot of poverty. All this experience growing up has a certain impact on you. You know what I mean? It, it, how can you not be angry? How can you not be upset when you don't understand? powers that be where you go to school and they tell you you're stupid, you don't know how to read or write because the educational school system is not preparing you for higher levels of education, you know what I mean? It develops this type of like all street or hood element or whatever they want to call it on TV, you know what I mean? Look at these criminals or look at these uh, people, they're so hard to deal with, but you know, it's the environment that has created, you know, the emotions that go behind a lot of these young brothers. So when we say warrior, it's not like, you know, a soldier that's for war. It's actually somebody trying to maintain that peace. And I think that peace is internal first, and then it manifests to your family, and then to your community. Number one thing I think with my people is that cultural confusion is on the base of their low self-esteem. Because it's a low self-esteem issue. There's probably not a bigger culture that's more broken than brown people. There's a lack of knowledge of who we are as a people. You know, our youngsters don't know. You ask them who they are, they're confused. You know, they don't know if they're Hispanic, they don't know if they're Latinos, they don't know if they're, you know, um, wetbacks, immigrants. You know, you hear all these derogatory like terms, you know, our people are referred to as illegal aliens. You know what I'm saying? Our people internalize this and believe it because that's what the media has reinforced and told them, this is who you are. Our low self-esteem is definitely the root cause of all the bad decisions that my people are making in this community. Whether it be drugs, gangs, uh, violence, uh, you know, uh, broken families, all the things that I talk about in my circle, that's definitely a decision made behind low self-esteem. And that low self-esteem is something that we inherited generations ago. We the people that are out there providing services, organizing events and things like that are also broken. If, you know, in the, in the last year or so, um, it was very important that we, that we took the time as members to, to heal ourselves, to also participate in activities outside of um, doing, 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 doing for others and not, you know, reinvesting in ourselves. And if we at least start on that journey, you know, to heal ourselves, then we will be around a little bit longer than, than not. December 16th of 1983, my older brother was murdered in uh, Oscar. And uh, I was 10 years old back then and, and I just lived a life um, that was, you know, very difficult. A lot of, I made a lot of bad decisions, uh, alcohol, drugs, the gang lifestyle. A lot, a lot of things were a part of that. And, and um, I could now say that a lot of those things were negative. On August 18th of 2012, my brother Gilbert was murdered. And because I've done a little bit of work, I've grown a little bit, um, I think that the maturity of how I was able to deal with things was, it's a lot, it, it makes a difficult situation a little smoother. Um, it doesn't take away that, that tragedy, but it definitely makes me uh, a little bit more effective. As we become empowered and conscious, we want to bring this to our people because we love our people. We don't want to get stuck on the problem. We want to. We said we want to say, look, as a collaborative effort, we got possible solutions that can help our communities out. There is good in the worst of us. There is bad in the best of us. Only when we work on those things within us.
does it change things for all of us? Whether we may be willing to admit it or not, our self-esteem has more to do with our ability to make good decisions rather than our intelligence. In the circle, we identify the root cause of some of the challenges that our communities face and our tendencies to participate in them. You know, we have a violent community, and we have, you know, some issues out there, and we act like they're not in here. The reason they're out there is because they're in here. My parents divorcing at three was very hard on me, and then um, being left with my grandmother, and then at five, she was shot and killed in front of me, so losing my grandmother, for me, was that like very traumatic, like losing my mother, so. So these things that, you know, you guys speak about are powerful things. Powerful things that if we don't, not only understand, but we don't heal from, we carry that into our community work, we carry that into our maybe relationships, we carry that into further work that we do. And if it's not dealt with in a healthy way, it gets tricky. It gets tricky. Some, I used to think by a certain age, it just be, it'll take care of itself. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen without some work. I think it's important, you know, to take that time off um, to uh, do introspection, to look at myself, to to reflect, you know, to hear about what drives me. But what are definitely my fears is it's easy to get lost in in the work, uh, whether it's community work, whether it's you know work for for money or family, and, and not really you know do things because they're the right thing to do. You know, I look forward to being here because it gives me that opportunity to look at myself. There's nothing in the community that really reflects, you know, any healthy foods. You won't find a salad bar <laughs> in our community. You won't find any. Probably go out of business. <laughs> <laughs> it might. <laughs> no soup plantation over here, right? When you start to take care of yourself, and it, you st it starts to reflect in your whole life. We, we see how it connects. You know what I mean? The physical manifestation of a lot of um, illnesses, you know, is related to some of the emotional imbalances that's going on inside. You know what I mean? You have to know that you're going to get better. You just have to have the right information and you have to have the tools to do it. And the tools are your food, the herbs, and your attitude, and your outlook on life. Because that plays a big part as well. And... Um, and healing your your body, your mind, and your spirit. To be free, to walk where I walk, to do what I do, to be free. Free I am, my dream is living and living life. Free I am, and free is my dream. You can use writing in a healing way, and that it also has, it doesn't have to be something for you to like share with everybody else. It doesn't have to be poetry. It doesn't have to be anything very specific. It's like if you're writing in your journal, it can be something private for yourself, but it's a very useful tool to have. We can continue to use this as a healing tool. Dear David, I want to sh share this situation. I came across the guy who murdered my brother, Gilbert. As I saw him being brought into court for his hearing, my adrenaline began to feel in a negative way. This caused me to have thoughts of revenge and the need to remove myself from the solution. We have a choice in our life and every moment you can change the dream that you're having. And, and so how do we use this in conjunction with writing to um, dream our world into being?